Well, hi everyone, and uh, I'm very pleased to be here and uh, honored to be uh, named a scholar uh, here at uh, Greenwood, the place where I've been before, uh, and I'm uh, always uh, uh, pleased to come back among friends, especially with this beautiful weather. Uh, Today's lecture has to do with the uh, CFC syndrome and uh, allied disorders, and uh, it is uh, uh, to some extent uh, autobiographical, uh, so uh, please bear with me if, uh, for a number of uh, uh, personal footnotes uh, along uh, the story that I'm going to tell. Uh, which covers a span uh, of uh, 30 years now, uh, from 1968 uh, until uh, today. And uh, uh, the first personal footnote is about these two uh, uh, persons here. Uh, uh, Dr. John Opitz, uh, whom all of you know, is uh, one of the founding fathers of uh, um, medical genetics in North America, and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jim Reynolds, who was his partner at the time when I visited with them in uh, the winter of 1983-84 in, uh, in Helena, Montana, where you see here uh, more or less the same portion of Main Street, also known as the Last Chance Gulch, uh, and that was a very cold summer, uh, winter when I was there, and um, we had to be inside, and there was nothing much to do except writing papers, which I uh, did, uh, which we did uh, together, and uh, the one I'm referring to today is this one, uh, this uh, uh, paper that was published in 1986 on the American Journal of Medical Genetics, New Multiple Congenital Anomalies, Mental Retardation Syndrome, with Cardiofacial Cutaneous Involvement, the CFC Syndrome. Uh, it's, um, it took a long time to publish this paper. Uh, the, uh, John was at the time the, uh, the editor of the American Journal of Medical Genetics, so the, uh, because of conflict of interest, uh, uh, John Carey acted as editor for this paper, sent it out for review, and uh, the reviewers gave us a very tough time. Uh, 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 for one main reason, that uh, uh, we uh, were not really describing a new syndrome, uh, but we were sort of rediscovering the Noonan syndrome, and this will be uh, you know what it is uh, uh, during the course of this talk. Uh, uh, but on retrospect, this is in fact uh, the uh, first uh, description of the uh, CFC syndrome. Even though uh, um, in the same year, Baratzer and Patton uh, published uh, the, the, the same condition, uh, except that they didn't give it a new name, they didn't identify it as a, as a new syndrome, but rather a Noonan-like short stature syndrome with sparse hair. Uh, and so this is probably why the uh, primeval paper on CFC, which is usually quoted, uh, is the previous one uh, and not this one. In the retrospect, when we went back and looked at the, uh, some older literature, uh, it appeared that uh, the probably CFC syndrome has also been described by uh, Navaratnam and Hodgson in 1973, and again by uh, Cantu and Al in 1982. Uh, uh, these are six of the uh, eight uh, patients that we published in, in 1986. And uh, to be uh, honest, I, uh, I don't know whether any of these were uh, eventually tested for the genes that were later discovered uh, for a CFC syndrome, except this one, Jamie Phillips, uh, 
uh, uh, who is a BRAF positive and uh, whom I've seen again a few years ago at, a, at the age of about 40, uh, doing relatively well in a, in a family home. Uh, 20 years later, we were able to uh, publish this uh, review article, uh, which uh, uh, placed the uh, CFC syndrome within this family of other conditions, including the Noonan syndrome and the Costello syndrome, uh, all of them having as a uh, uh, common denominator the uh, uh, they are belonging to a uh, uh, to the same uh, signaling pathway uh, that of the uh, the so-called rust erk pathway uh, that we'll uh, uh, deal with uh, in a little more detail uh, shortly. Uh, two years later, uh, uh, Kate Rowan uh, coined the term rasopathy uh, to, uh, in fact, in include uh, the uh, syndrome I uh, uh, just mentioned. And in fact, uh, more than those, there is now a uh, relatively long list of conditions that uh, fall uh, within this category uh, and uh, uh, that are a number of things in common. Uh, like a, a peculiar face, cardiac defect, growth failure, epidermal anomalies, musculoskeletal anomalies, intellectual disability, and autosomal dominant inheritance. Uh, a, uh, all of those uh, under the same heading of receptors. Uh, in fact, as I was uh, saying, the list is uh, relatively long including the ones we have already mentioned, Noonan, Costello, and uh, CFC, but also the uh, Noonan multiple antigenous syndrome, uh, once called the Leopard syndrome, which basically differs uh, from Noonan uh, because of the antigenes uh, uh, and because of deafness. These are the two main things that uh, uh, distinguish uh, Noonan and, and Noonan multiple antigenous. Uh, then we have a Noonan like uh, with anagen hair, which is this thin neonatal hair that should eventually disappear but stay on in these cases. A Noonan like with or without juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia. And then two conditions that are called rasopathies because also belong to the same, in a, in a way, are inscribed into the same rust erk pathway, but in fact are clinically distinct from the others, uh, neurofibromatosis one and the Legion syndrome, which is a neurofibromatosis type one like uh, condition. Uh, if we have uh, uh, several conditions, we have an even larger number of genes, uh, like for instance, uh, for uh, Noonan, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine genes, and then uh, more uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, for Costello, for uh, CFC, uh, for the other ones we have mentioned. And uh, uh, there, there are two, uh, two things to be uh, pointed out here. One is that the, uh, obviously the same condition can be uh, caused by different genes. And two, that the same gene can cause different conditions, like for instance, DRAF being reported uh, for Noonan, uh, uh, for uh, Noonan multiple antigenes, and of course for, for uh, CFC, where, where is the major gene. Uh, and uh, uh, the the, the first gene uh, to be found, as we shall see, is PTPN11 for, for Noonan. And uh, all of the others were uh, uh, discovered as candidate genes within the ras erk pathway, except for uh, SOS2 and LZTR1, which are the most recently found. Uh, and these uh, were found by, not as candidate genes, but 
by, in, by exome sequencing on uh, Noonan patient uh, that had tested negative for all the other known genes. Uh, one last note, the uh, Costello syndrome here, uh, it has a, a, a nomen number starting with a two, which would indicate a, a recessive condition, but in fact it is dominant. Uh, I don't know why the, this thing here was never updated. The, uh, after the original report, there were a number of um, uh, familiar cases, uh, SIDS affected, which uh, made us think at the time that it, the condition might be recessive. And it also looked like a metabolic disorder, which also, uh, you know, make us think in that direction. But in fact, uh, on, on, uh, with the discovery of more cases, it was uh, clear that the condition was uh, <coughs> dominant, uh, although sporadic, uh, and, uh, and that the uh, familiar cases were most likely due to germinal mosaicism in one parent. Uh, so uh, the uh, uh, the genes that have shown uh, all coding for proteins that act within the ras erc pathway uh, explain why uh, these conditions, although being genetically heterogeneous are um, phenotypically similar. In fact, if you were to um, describe on paper one of these patients uh, without seeing the face or without seeing the patient uh, uh, itself, himself or himself, it would be very difficult to, to decide whether this you're describing, say, a, a CFC or, or, or a Noonan or even a Costello uh, patient. They are similar. And obviously they are similar because all of the, pro the, the respective proteins act within the same pathway. Uh, which is the following, the uh, ras erc signaling pathway which is very important for uh, uh, cell proliferation, cell differentiation, and cell death. Uh, it, the, uh, the process starts uh, with a, uh, an interaction of any receptor uh, at the cell surface with its uh, ligand. This will set in motion the uh, ras erc pathway, which is then regulated by a number of other genes around here. Uh, now, this is goes back to 2013, so it doesn't contain the last two genes that were uh, included in the previous table, uh, but uh, it's uh, updated enough to tell you Noonan syndrome has to do with SOS1, CRAF or RAF1, SHIP2, which is a product of PTPN11, again, NRAS, CFC, KRAS, BRAF, MAC12, Costello, HRAS, and this is an, a, an important exception to the, with respect to the others because the uh, HRAS is the only gene for, for Costello. The other syndromes may have multiple genes, but Costello has only HRAS. And this has important implications. Uh, and uh, even a larger number of mutations. Uh, here is a list of, uh, a recent list of uh, mutation of just BRAF, uh, and uh, uh, mostly causing CFC, but also in some cases causing Noonan or or uh, leopard syndrome or uh, mm -hmm. uh, multiple indigenous syndrome. Um, now, for those who are uh, familiar with. Uh, with the pathway and with its implication for cancer, the question is, why is it that cancer is not a, a common uh, feature of Resopathies, with the exception of Costello, which has some cancer risk. But generally, uh, uh, cancer is an issue, but there are no uh, data to indicate that uh, the uh, 
there is a substantially increased risk of cancer in, uh, in uh, esophagus. Again, with the exception of Costello. In spite of the fact that the, um, the, uh, uh, the mutations that we see in rasapatis are usually gain of functional mutation uh, accelerating the, uh, the pathway, like it is in, uh, in tumors, in cancer. Uh, so if these mutations can cause cancer, why is it? Uh, that the uh, uh, that there is no, no more no, not not increased risk of cancer in the samples. We'll see that in, in a moment. Uh, uh, but then let's now uh, briefly concentrate on the uh, CFC uh, phenotype. Uh, CFC is a multiple congenital anomaly intellectual disability syndrome uh, with the CNS and uh, development issues causing intellectual disability moderated to severe in the essentially 100% of the cases. So all of the uh, bona fide uh, cases we know of uh, uh, CFC syndrome are uh, sporadic cases because they cannot reproduce due to the uh, uh, intellectual disability. Uh, delayed level acquisition. Uh, all of, in all of them, hypotonia leading to motor delay and a seizure in one third of the cases. Uh, this is one of the uh, even life threatening complications in CFC syndrome and one we had not picked up in our first eight patients. I went back to the paper, looked at it carefully, uh, and uh, there was only one out of those eight who had had uh, some episodes of infantile seizures, but those did not uh, come back again, so it was not an issue in, in those patients, while in, 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 in a good proportion now, epilepsy is, is a big problem, and oftentimes uh, drug resistance. The face with macrocephaly, depressed uh, laser bridge with a, with a bulbous tip, low set and posteriorly angulated ears, hypoplasia of the supraorbital ridges, by temporal constriction, high cranial vault, long philtrum, prominent philtrum, and micrognathia. And uh, the skin, which is you know, one of the uh, essentials in CSC, uh, some kind of adnexal abnormality, skin or adnexal abnormality is present in all of the cases, uh, with sparse and curly hair uh, being uh, most uh, frequently seen sparse or absent eyebrows, follicular or general hyperkeratosis, uh, hypo, hyperpigmentation, and palmoplantar hyperkeratosis. The heart is uh, involved uh, in uh, about 85% of the cases, uh, with uh, ha about half of these having pulmonary about stenosis and another half hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, atrial septal defect is the third most common uh, condition, sometimes in uh, uh, combination uh, with, uh, with the other two. The eye uh, with <coughs> the breaking of particular fissures, hyperpillary, <coughs> dismus, and become folds, ptosis, myopia, nystagmus. And uh, I uh, just added this uh, recent, uh, recently published uh, table uh, to uh, remind you that uh, most of the uh, manifestations of the CFC syndrome are already present at birth, so the diagnosis is, can be suspected at birth, uh, uh, with one uh, addition which is uh, frequently seen, that of polyhydra. Now, uh, back to the uh, question uh, whether we were uh, describing a new syndrome or simply rediscovering uh, the Noonan syndrome, this became some sort of a uh, controversy uh, for some authors who were clearly uh, uh, convinced that we were just rediscribing the Noonan syndrome. Uh, we were not. Uh, we uh, tried to defend our uh, position 
for instance, showing that uh, some manifestations are in fact uh, almost exclusively present in CFC syndrome, like sparse thin curly hair or hyperkeratosis, uh, hyperkeratotic skin lesions, or very uh, much more frequently than Noonan, the uh, intellectual delay. While in some other, for some other manifestations, familiar occurrence one, neck abnormalities, cubitus valgus, uh, <coughs> low posterior hairline were much more common in, in, uh, in the Noonan syndrome. Uh, we have no other ways of, of defending our position but insisting on phenotypic differences to be, between there were no genes at the time. And this is where we uh, stood uh, in, uh, in the year 2000 when the first CFC uh, conference was convened in, uh, in Salt Lake City with uh, the families who were known at the time in North America, or at least some of them. And here is a group of uh, people who attended that conference, uh, Jackie Noonan, Judy Allenson, uh, David Riscoccio, uh, John Kerry, John Opitz, uh, and uh, Ines Kawamura, who uh, uh, were with me uh, after, from afterwards, after, after that. Uh, then, the next year, 2001, uh, the group of uh, Bruce Gelb with Marco Tartaglia as first author described the first gene uh, within the Rasafati spectrum, the PTPN11, uh, as uh, the cause of, uh, of uh, Lunar Syndrome. And uh, this is the uh, uh, shift to uh, protein with this catalytic, catalytic, catalytic domain here. And uh, uh, <coughs> the mutations concentrated mostly on the uh, NSH2 domain uh, of the protein. And uh, uh, most of these mutations, gain of function mutation. And uh, here we have the uh, answer to the question we had asked before about cancer. Uh, the, uh, all of these mutations down here are the ones that cause a Noonan syndrome. Uh, uh, or in fact, retrospectively uh, other conditions within the same spectrum. All of the mutations that you see up here on the upper part of the slide are mutations that cause cancer. And what is the difference? The difference is that uh, this is, these are evident, evidently more potent than these and can only be tolerated as a somatic mutation. Uh, uh, these probably occur also as germinal mutations, but in that case cause uh, the uh, early demise of the pregnancy. They are not compatible uh, with the development of the pregnancy. Uh, the, uh, these mutations here, uh, which are evidently hypomorphic with respect to the uh, cancer-causing mutations, are tolerated uh, during development, and uh, so the result is the uh, condition that we see. Now let me uh, uh, point out uh, one detail here. Um, one of the cancers caused by the cancer-causing mutations of PTPN11 is the juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia, which is a, a severe form of leukemia uh, leading to death almost inevitably. There is one mutation here, T73I, uh, which has been found in uh, uh, cases where Noonan syndrome is associated with juvenile monomyelocytic leukemia. So this is probably a somewhat more uh, penetrant mutation, but the fact is that the, uh, this form of the JMML is mild and it uh, uh, cures itself spontaneously. So these children don't die on JMML. They come out of it while it's uh, as, as an adult or, or a juvenile tumor is lethal. Is that 
Thank you. All right, so that was an important turning point uh, for, for, for the whole field and for us too, because uh, uh, at least we had an opportunity to uh, check on our uh, CFC cases and see whether any of those would have a PTPN mutation, because that would be important in our, uh, with respect to our contention that CFC is separate from Newman. And that we did when, when Ines and John were uh, in Rome in the year 2001. And uh, we, uh, Ines had a dozen of or so uh, cases from Brazil. She's a dermatologist from Brazil. And these cases were all screened for PTPN11 mutation. We didn't find any. So we came uh, at least to the condition that these mutations are not responsible for CFC. And a few years later, they, uh, eventually the uh, CFC mutations were discovered by in, uh, the, at the same time and independently by two groups. One in, uh, in North America, the group of Kate Rowan, uh, who described uh, the uh, BRAF uh, MEC1, MEC2 genes and uh, uh, another group uh, in, in Japan of, of of Aoki and Matsubara were we also collaborators uh, and uh, they found uh, the same BRAF and also KRAS as uh, genes responsible for uh, CFC. This is the uh, mutations found by Rowan uh, in, in BRAF, number of mutations here, uh, and in MAC1 and MAC2. Uh, and uh, these are the uh, mutations found by uh, Matsubara's group in, in KRAS and in BRAF. And again, uh, you can see even from here, from the very first publication, uh, the distinction between uh, germline mutations identified in CFC syndrome and other mutations predicted to uh, cause cancer to be oncogenic, uh, different from the ones who have been found on CFC. And the same, uh, the same thing for, uh, for BRAF mutations, uh, distinguishing those that can cause cancer uh, with respect to those that can cause CFC. Now, with all genes in hand, we can, uh, you know, uh, exactly identify each case we see, uh, and, uh, uh, and this is important. Uh, even though I must say that uh, there isn't really a clear-cut uh, genotype-phenotype correlation. Uh, it doesn't really matter much whether the, uh, the patient has uh, BRAF, MEC1, MEC2 mutation. Uh, the only difference maybe it's, uh, that one can see is with KRAS. KRAS mutations tend to be more severe. And in fact, KRAS mutations sort of in the class on, on themselves. So this is a one single patient. Uh, from uh, infancy to young adulthood um, with a BRAF uh, recent mutation. And this is another guy uh, with a uh, MAC2 uh, uh, recent mutation. <coughs> Now, uh, uh, in, in, in spite of this, uh, you know, increased knowledge in the, uh, of the phenotype and of the genes, uh, differential diagnosis in a clinic continue to be different. Even uh, people who are expert in the field uh, may have a hard time uh, telling uh, from the phenotype uh, one CFC. Uh, from one CFC patient from a CFC case from a Noonan case, uh, Costello may be a little bit more distinct, uh, but CFC Noonan uh, they do overlap. Uh, 
substantially. Uh, and only the, uh, the gene can tell, uh, but then if you do find BRAF, for instance, BRAF has been reported for both for CFC and for Moon, and so some, uh, uh, some uh, determination may remain there, uh, except that it's, it's not really very important uh, from a, a practical point of view because uh, they are both due to uh, somatic mutations, so the, uh, the implication for the family in terms of recurrence are essentially uh, uh, identical. The Costello syndrome is, is a different case. It's important to, um, to uh, uh, sort out the Costello syndrome cases uh, because of what I uh, said before, namely that there is a in significantly increased risk of tumor, rhabdomyosarcoma, ganglion, neuroblastoma, and even an adult tumor like bladder carcinoma have been reported in a number of instances uh, for the G12A uh, mutation and the uh, HRAS gene. So it is important to sort out the Costello cases because these cases will then have to undergo a, um, a surveillance protocol to, uh, for cancer. Uh, and uh, fortunately, in this case, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the laboratory helps because, like I said before, uh, the uh, Costello is exclusively caused by uh, uh, HRS mutations. And speaking about the lab, the, uh, nowadays we are uh, very facilitated in our approach. Uh, there was a time when uh, uh, once you uh, had a, a patient that didn't know exactly what it was, you may have to go through, you know, probably several centers to, until you hit the right gene. Now with NGS we have the panels and it's, it's much easier and even less expensive at the end of the day. <clears throat> now, what can be done? Uh, the, uh, ultimately, all of the efforts we do in uh, uh, clarifying the phenotype and the genotypes is for the purpose of uh, benefiting the patients and their families. So what can we do practically when we have a case? Uh, there is no cure, as we'll see at the very end, uh, but there are things that can be done. And uh, these are um, nicely outlined in this uh, pediatrics paper of uh, uh, a little over a year ago, uh, where uh, um, a group of us under the aegis of the uh, CFC International, which is the, the support, the family support group for CFC, convened in, uh, in uh, uh, I think it was San Francisco, in, uh, in 2011, maybe, or 12, and uh, the, this uh, uh, paper was drafted, which is uh, composed basically uh, of a number of tables where the, uh, <coughs> the main findings of uh, CFC are uh, listed, uh, uh, in this case the, uh, uh, the hard findings, uh, sorting out which ones are the most common, like pulmonary stenosis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, atrial septal defect, which ones may occur, be important a number of times, and which ones are rare. So you know already uh, how to uh, orient uh, yourself in, in this uh, rather uh, complex uh, field. The same for gastrointestinal. Uh, gastrointestinal is one major issue in uh, CFC with uh, uh, very, uh, very severe uh, feeding difficulties. The, feeding difficulties may be very severe with this, uh, such swallowing dysfunction, gastroesophageal reflux, constipation, 
uh, we uh, s uh, s see uh, patients that are uh, that need a uh, a, 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 a tube feeding or or even a a bag feeding uh, uh, until uh, when well into their childhood. Uh, other findings are, are less common and not as um, problematic uh, with respect to the general health of these children. Dermatologic, uh, quite common, and again listed here in terms of uh, their uh, relative frequency. We don't have to go over this again. And then there is a, now, there are maybe uh, six or seven or eight tables of these uh, um, concerning uh, different uh, organs and apparati. Uh, and then there is a, an equal number of uh, additional uh, tables that report on what is good to do, on what is recommended that, that be done uh, if, if, if there is a cardiovascular issue. Well, first of all, suspect in case of Noonan syndrome, for instance, or CSC syndrome in this case, uh, the uh, cardiovascular abnormality has to be suspected from the very beginning, even if you don't, cannot hear a, uh, a, uh, any, any uh, special uh, tone abnormalities when you are on auscultation. Uh, then you will have to, to, to go on and request a little cardiogram or a electrocardiogram or a chest ray and refer to a cardiologist in any case. And then if a, uh, uh, a, something is found, like it is in 85% of the patients, uh, whatever is found will have to be managed, either a wait and see or a surgical correction. And uh, all of this will have to go on uh, a, uh, for a number of years, even if there doesn't seem to be uh, any uh, defect uh, to begin with, uh, because the uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can show up uh, later in life. And the same thing for gastrointestinal uh, diagnosis, you need to do a nutrition assessment, refer to the gastroenterology, evaluate for G reflux and swallowing dysfunction and, and so on. And as an ongoing management, a regular follow-up to monitor growth and nutrition, continued feeding therapy if persistent feeding difficulty. And same uh, for the uh, dermatologic uh, involvement, which are I mean, generally less severe than the other ones, uh, but uh, still, um, still important to uh, take care of. Uh, and I should have actually added the neurological assessment, which is also very important uh, for these children. And uh, they follow up uh, with respect to um, habilitation, uh, offering you know, a special means of, of uh, uh, doing as much as possible for, for their uh, learning and to uh, try and, uh, and, uh, and deal with the epilepsy uh, when necessary. Uh, coming to a close, just to remember uh, or ask ourselves, what about a cure? Is, is this at all possible? Well, theoretically, uh, Th there is a way because the RASP ERP pathway is well known to the uh, to the big pharma industry uh, in terms of the interest they have in uh, uh, controlling the hyperactivity of this pathway for the control of cancer, and uh, there are a number of compounds that have been uh, tested and tried and. Uh, and some are, are uh, already in use. And now, with respect to taking this evidence and simply moving it into the treatment of CFC syndrome or other rasopathies, 
there are at least two uh, important things that have to be said. Well, first of all, uh, we are not dealing with cancer in those cases, and uh, uh, we certainly don't want to overdo uh, whatever are whatever the effects of these drugs are. And so one has to be very careful in uh, simply thinking of transferring uh, the, the, this knowledge to the, to the uh, Rasapati problem. The other thing, uh, which is equally important, is that uh, in cancer, we have a clear endpoint when we try a new drug, and that is the cure of cancer. Uh, the disappearance of cancer. In, a case, in the case of a CFC syndrome patient, what would our endpoint be? Intellectual disability, maybe one. Cardiac condition, maybe. Uh, epilepsy, maybe. <coughs> so we don't have a clear uh, endpoint uh, that we may choose to measure the effectiveness uh, of any drug <coughs> we try, and in fact, endpoints might be different for different cases, uh, because some may have one major issue, others may have another major issue that the family wants to, to address. I have some experience uh, with the uh, fragile X syndrome that I will describe in a in one of the uh, following lectures, and uh, there it's, it's easier because, uh, uh, because the uh, behavior or, or learning ability is you know, the issue, and then you, you, you have an, unpain, an end point there almost defining itself, but here it's, it's, much, it's much more complicated. And uh, I, I cannot really, uh, I wouldn't be able to make a prediction on, on uh, what to expect uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, developing uh, an effective drug using, uh, using uh, this kind of approach, uh, targeting the Rasaf uh, plasma. Uh, fortunately, uh, and this is uh, relatively good news. There are several animal models of, uh, of all Rasapatis, or at least of these three Rasapatis, Moon and CFC and Costello syndrome. And uh, there is work going on. I, I haven't really followed up uh, too much uh, on it, uh, but at least there is a uh, possibility of. Um, of uh, testing uh, any new options we may have the, uh, uh, in terms of uh, drugs that can be used for aerosolities. And uh, my final slide is about CFC International, uh, which has really has been a, a driving force uh, behind all of the discoveries that have been made over the last 15 years, it's a uh, really a, a, a very good group of families, CFC, which I know best, but then also Moonan and, 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 uh, and Costello, and uh, they have pushed and they have provided uh, even some uh, financial resources, uh, inducing a uh, you know, a relatively large group of investigators to dedicate themselves to the, to the field and uh, to come up with some of the answers that were needed. That's it. Thank you. Do you have any questions?